Uh, here, here's my take on truth really quick. Not, it's not my take, it's my experience, unfortunately. Truth is sometimes, in some church contexts, uh, used with a capital T, and, and maybe even all caps, and it's about evidence that demands a verdict. We've got to prove these things about Moses's authority in the first five books or evolution or you know any of these, these things, these debates. And so for a lot of folks that have kind of come out of those spaces and are saying, we, we want the, the real deal stuff over here, uh, it can be, truth can almost be a triggering word. And, and that's, that's uh, uh, when it's, you know, because it's been framed so poorly. And so mm -hmm. the truth you're talking about, I think is a deeper kind of truth. It's uh, truth with a proper noun kind of capital T. This is yeah. <laughs> a tr the truth is this person yes. um, and, and so much more than that, uh, yes. silly old debate. Yes, yes, it's fascinating, isn't it? I don't know if I quote it in this book, but I, I was very struck 20 years or so ago by reading the, the last book written by the great philosopher Bernard Williams, who was a, a secular mm. philosopher, but very, very wise and interesting man called Truth and Truthfulness. And it, it basically saying that we live in a world which is more and more suspicious and so is demanding more and more truth. We want to know the facts about what happened in that accident. We want to know the facts about who in the government mm. was fiddling this and whatever. But the only way we can do that is by having more and more surveys and getting more and more people to fill out forms and so on, which means that we all acquire filing cabinets full of documents in case somebody sues us because we were supposed to be on wow. top of that, whatever. Uh -huh. So he says, we are demanding more and more truth, but we are making it harder and harder for ourselves to get it. And that's hmm. the kind of postmodern moment where you think, oh, my goodness, is there any such thing as truth? Um, yeah, and I remember, remember when I first was in the Middle East, I spent a sabbatical there in spring 1989, and I talked to all kinds of people in Jerusalem and around about what was going on, what had gone on, etc. Everybody had a different story, which seemed pretty true when they told it to me, but no two or three of those stories would ultimately mesh with each other. And I just had to live with the fact that these were all passionately held beliefs they did relate to real things that had happened on the ground, but that everybody's take was significantly different from everybody else's. And it wasn't just two takes, it was like 10 or 20 or however many. Um, and, you know, in other words, life is much more complicated than we imagine. The danger with truth with capitals all the way through like that, and then, as you say, evidence that demands a verdict, etc., that is one way in for doing a certain style of apologetics, but it's very brittle and it's very rationalist. And I think it comes to us out of the 18th century rational critiques of Christianity on the back of the Enlightenment and people like David Hume and Edward Gibbon and so on, sneering at Christianity and say, nobody believes all that stuff these days. Here are our reasons, here are the facts, et cetera, et cetera. And then that has generated uh, a breed of rationalist apologetics that says, no, no, we, we can play rationalism too. We start here and we go A, B, C, D, E, bang, there it is. Christianity is true. So if you don't see it, you're either stupid or wicked or quite possibly both. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think, uh, uh, that's a very modernist way of going about it. And that's one of the reasons for writing a book like this is to come at the central issues from several different angles, which aren't just about rationalistic truth, but about painting a picture or singing a song, which mm. makes sense of things and invites other people to join in. Um, does, does, that, yeah. does that make sense? Um, Absolutely, and, yeah. And then for, for me, one of the most telling moments in John's gospel is when Pilate says to Jesus, are you a king? And yeah. Jesus says, I've come to tell the truth. And you think, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's a typical Johannine conversation yeah. where Jesus is answering the question Pilate should have asked. But actually, I think it's very profound because I think what Jesus is saying is, I am speaking the new creation into yeah. being. I am the Lord of the new creation. And when I am speaking, it's coming into being. And that's what my kingdom looks like. Hmm. And Pilate just says, well, what is truth? You know, because yeah. he's a postmodernist. He knows that we make our own truth around here. We Romans, you know, all, all empires yeah. make their own truths. We, we yeah. British made our own truth in the 19th century. You Americans make it in the 21st century. <laughs> and, uh, and, that's absolutely and right. We, 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 all, we all know it's, it's a mess, but there it is. So I, I was and am fascinated by that notion at several levels. And John's gospel is one of the places to get into it.